wait, Thomas, ho hold on. I can't. Leave us alone. Uh, no. No, 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 no way, no way, no way, no way that you did not just... If you want privacy online, ChatterNet is a pretty good bet. Not foolproof, but relatively difficult for the government to monitor. Waypoint, on the other hand, is wide open. Supposedly, the Office of Naval Intelligence has software on the network capable of listening to every single conversation galaxy-wide. And if you say the wrong thing, the conversation gets flagged. Oh, God, what did I just do? What I had just done was conduct an unsanctioned follow-up interview with a survivor of a war camp, accused him of lying about it, basically got him to admit that lie, and then ended by possibly implicating my employer, the most powerful military agency in history, in either bribery or coercion. I done all of that on Waypoint. I thought I was going to throw up. Wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Maybe it wasn't that bad. I went and listened back. Would they flag that word? What about that one? That phrase sounds bad by itself, but not in context. They factor in tone of voice, right? I was sitting there, emotionally guessing how an insanely sophisticated algorithm is weighted. Basically, I was trying to outsmart a legion of robots. Damn it, Ben. It was too late. Those words were gone. That data had been processed. And I had either been flagged or I hadn't. I had no idea what would happen next. I'm Benjamin Giroux, and this is Hunt the Truth. Benjamin! I'd never been so happy to hear from Mishak Maradi. I made him triple check the security of our call. You sure? Relax! We are under the tinfoil hat of secrecy. <laughs> Seriously, though, we are fully secured. Mishak could probably tell I was desperate, okay. when after months of his unsolicited theories, I actually solicited uh, one. What's going on out there right now? I'm glad you asked. Strong patterns. A lot of chatter in the military bars, soldiers drunk and unhappy. You know, local graffiti corroborates these complaints. The helmet overfloweth. This is how Mishak talks. For a while, I thought maybe there was an actual group of people somewhere who used these terms. But there's not. It's just Mishak. My prognosis? Ripples in the ranks. Army, orb de shock troopers, marines, I mean, across the board, men at arms, up in arms. When soldiers get frustrated, they get sloppy with their communication. The more frustration, the more unsecured chatter. Right now, there was a lot of both. And there's a sizable leak of booyah worthy transmissions distilling the slush. Ah, the slush. That immense soup of data siphoned off of unsecure networks. The preferred source for nut jobs everywhere. The data's all legit. There's just such an ungodly huge amount of it that it's practically useless. To Mishak's credit, though, he somehow managed to draw somewhat sound conclusions from it on occasion. It was kind of amazing. I asked why there was so much discontent across the military. MC-11 Scepter. That's Mishak for the chief. He's off being creative. <laughs> he could be off the grid. Fleetcom is trying to smoke screen like they're on top of his position, but they're not. So the trombones are playing the brown note on that one, and the grunts are a-grumbling. The military is one pissed off polygon right now. Apparently, some are even questioning Master Chief's motivations and allegiances. The word traitor I mean, come on. has been used. Seriously? If he's disobeying orders, that's bad, but calling the chief a traitor? The guy who legitimately saved humanity multiple times. That's just... Either way, you have to consider the underlying question. MC is the precedent for free reign in the military. He's held responsible for protecting a galaxy. A job that big requires absolute mobility. But then, that's a whole lot of power to give one man. Hence the dichotomy, Benjamin. Power and responsibility. The shock was getting philosophical and making a lot of sense. When it comes to threats against us, though, this issue of power and responsibility has always been shrouded in secrecy. As civilians, we don't know what's happening, who's out there, what they're doing. And according to Mishak, that ignorance could be about to blow up in our faces again. There's something else afoot, Benjamin. I'm here in deep space, and I'd hoped these events would turn out to be random, but now it's, it could be bad. Mishak was a lot of things, but never vague. I asked him what sort of bad he was talking about. Uh, electromagnetic fluctuations, uh, uh, slip spacious disruption, uh, epidemic data corruption, all of it. I mean, you know, what's happening? It's quiet, it's light, but it's affecting everything. Ripples 
on a gigantic scale. I'm talking whole star systems, it's just, I don't want to say I'm frightened. <laughs> you know what I mean? But to be honest... I I'm sorry, Mishak, hold on a second, just hold on. As Mishak's sketch of a horrifying reality started to emerge, the last thing I wanted to do was interrupt him, but I'd just been reminded of a more immediate, horrifying reality. From Sully, an event on my calendar, no message. Oh no. My stomach dropped. My flight to ONI's Boston headquarters left in three hours. They were calling me in. This had never happened to me before. I said goodbye to Mishak. It now seemed painfully clear that my waypoint conversation with Thomas Wu had been flagged. By the time I landed on Earth, I was one giant ulcer. I'd spent every sleepless hour of the flight running over everything in my head. The conflicting stories I'd heard, the gut-twisting possibilities of what would happen in Boston. I looked and felt like death. All I was looking forward to at this point was Petra Janicek. I'd hit her up right before I left, asked if she'd meet me near the ONI campus. Thankfully, she said yes. Petra and I are in the same line of work. We make the government look good. The last time I saw her was six years ago in New Mombasa. The day it happened. We were both there. We both saw the chief do what he did. But afterwards, while I retreated to a quiet little hamlet across the galaxy, Petra stuck around and made a name for herself. I was hoping she could throw me a lifeline. So I threw some hey, cold stranger. water on my face, Petra. pulled myself Sorry. together, and while. met up with her at a local pub. You know, for a guy just returning from a six year spirit walk in deep space, I'm impressed. You actually showed up on time. Same old well, Petra. She already time knew time I'd time gotten time. the Master Chief assignment, and she was not happy. Apparently, she was still waiting for her face-to-face -face exclusive with the Chief. I refrained from laughing out loud at that little fantasy, but she continued with the ball-busting anyway. So why are you here? No, wait, let me guess. Let me guess the title of your story. Heroism Untold. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, something like that. Yeah, I'm sure it's hard-hitting. What's a solid commissioned expose look like nowadays, anyway? And only one sheet of pre-approved sources? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, whatever. Okay, you can do a fluff piece over Waypoint from your Rebel Rock. So, again, why are you here? If you haven't noticed yet, Petra cuts to the chase. Sully called me in. Sully? He what? He called you here? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. I told her about confronting Thomas Wu. How I'd contradicted a statement of his that was probably supposed to be Sully's main deliverable for the interview. Not only did Petra not see the problem with that, though, she seemed to think it was cute. Whoa, whoa, old Benji Rogue. You're coming off the bench feisty. No, 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 I, I, I... The guy's not I, gonna I, rat I, on you. It'll just make him look as I, bad. I did the whole interview on Waypoint. That got her attention. I think it got flagged. You think it... I got the summons from Sully a few hours later. Petra's face and voice hadn't changed, but her eyes were suddenly on fire. Ben... I, got, I messed up, Petra. You messed up? How? The story, I... the story, it was falling apart, and these inconsistencies between the sources were... Inconsistencies? With Oni's sources? No, with mine. You found sources in the outer yeah, colonies. Yeah, I made friends in the past few years. I, I, I doubt Sully realized I'd have that resource in my arsenal. He definitely didn't. Ben, listen to me. You used to be a government lapdog at your peak. Then you deep spaced yourself into obscurity. You have no juice now, and that's why they picked you. Sully gives you this bone, you're supposed to be extra eternally grateful. Just wag your little tail and play fetch. So why the hell are you peeing on the rug instead? Have you forgotten the way everything works? No, I, I don't know. I just, I, this is bad, Petra. Ben, it's... And it's not ancient history either. There are rumblings in the outer colonies right now. Maybe something really bad. I was talking last week to this guy, I know. Mishak Maradi, I well, know. You, how do you know that? I, I've continued being an actual journalist for the past six years, but who cares, Ben? I hear what you're saying. We can okay, blow this, this is... thing open, Petra. <sighs> oh, okay. All right, cowboy. No, seriously. This is big. I can't even begin to reconcile the things I'm hearing with the story I'm supposed to tell. Multiple sources that Chief died at six, complete mm -hmm. fabrications, mm -hmm. genetically augmenting kids. I know, they are crazy charging that much for a shore trip. Suddenly, I mean, Petra was ranting about the beach, loudly, and digging her fingertip hard into my forearm. I just sat there, totally confused, as she rambled nonsense, intermittently glancing down at her compad. What was happening? There and negotiate a better rate. Because seriously, then I understood, I all the money you could have saved, really and I froze. I don't even understand why they would charge you that much. They were listening. My entire family. I'd figure I mean, there were cameras on us. There were always everywhere here. 
But there was full audio surveillance now, too? Is that even possible? She glanced down at her comm pad one last time. Don't put up with it. Ben. Are there ears on us? There were for the last 45 seconds, but there's always eyes everywhere, so don't look so dramatic. Talk about whatever you want, but look like you're talking about the weather. And if I start actually talking about the weather, you play along. Okay? Apparently, the system didn't bother listening in until you gave it certain visual cues. Facial expressions, body language, anything that looks intense, like my little outburst. The video flags it, and your conversation gets temporarily isolated. Petra's vacay babbling had just saved my ass. <sighs> Listen, I believe you that the truth about this story is terrible. But what you're talking about doing, that's door number two stuff. You're door number one guy. But I have... Oh, come on, come on, what are you gonna do? Ben, get the real scoop? You're too sloppy, you can't do this, you're, you're out of touch. You haven't Maybe been... not by myself, but with your help, with other people's Honestly, help. Honestly, I love the idea of cutting the strings and tearing it all down, but I'm sorry. It's not gonna be today. And to be brutal, it's never gonna be you. That was brutal. It stung. I got pissed. And then I immediately knew she was right. Ben, take the money. Do your job. God, oh God, oh God, I'm supposed to walk over there right now. Just, hey, just tell Sully you were drunk, you were trying to get a rise out of the guy, something, just play stupid. Besides, you don't, you don't know you got flagged. This meeting could just be a coincidence. They called me in, this is so weird. I You'll mean, be fine. The worst thing they'll- well, I've listen, never called- Hey, Ben, the worst thing they'll do is kill the story and cut you from rotation. That's probably it. I mean, I can't imagine they would- No, you'll be fine. Just be a good dog, knock him dead. I'll, I'll get the bill. Thanks, Petra. But Ben, if I were you, I'd upload whatever you got on the story before you go in. Just send backups to someone you trust, you know, just, just in case. That was the closest thing to concern I'd ever heard from Petra. I immediately took her advice and was queuing up all my files to transfer to Ray as I crossed Torreña Avenue toward ONI. The campus was integrated right into the city. A courtyard of dark buildings, mature oak trees, grass, walkways. It just looked like a campus. The only thing different about it was the sidewalk. Twice as wide as it was across the street. And the inner half of the pavement was black stone. A thick, dark border. Several feet wide that surrounded the whole complex. I walked right up to the obsidian half of the sidewalk and stopped. Something was off about the courtyard in front of me, like something was missing. I looked both directions down the sidewalk. There were no fences or guards, plenty of pedestrians, seemingly none of them paying any attention to the complex as they passed. Except for one tiny thing, none of them, not a single one of the dozens of white collar workers and shoppers and parents and kids walking up and down that sidewalk, laid a foot anywhere near the black half of the pavement. On a 20-foot wide walkway, they were all moving single file right up against the curb. I turned and looked back at the campus, listening. No birds. That's what was missing. There were no birds in the trees. In fact, there was no sound in the air at all. Nothing moved. I stood at the edge of the obsidian. I had no choice. I swiped the transfer folder over to Ray's hard drive, took a deep breath, and crossed the black line. Please join me for the next episode of Hunt the Truth.